Those who profess to favour freedom and yet depreciate agitation are people who want crops without ploughing the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the roar of its many waters. The struggle may be a moral one, or it may be a physical one, or it may be both. But it must be a struggle. Power concedes nothing without demand. It never has, and it never will. That quote comes from a man by the name of Frederick Douglass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Surviving the Matrix. My name is Maxwell Egan, and I will be your host for the next hour. Now, as we stand here nearing the end of 2009, the world is poised to change the way it has never changed before. The world as we know it is set to momentarily end. The demise of the world that we have known is not coming from war, it's not climate disaster, it's not because of a comet heading to the earth, it's not because the world is ending in 2012, it is because legislation is currently being introduced that is set to change the world that we have known forever. And this legislation comes in the form of the Copenhagen Treaty. As I've discussed with you on shows over the previous weeks, this treaty is a very important treaty. And folks, I'd much prefer to be coming on here and simply talking about energy, talking about the oneness, talking about global unity. But we are facing a situation at the moment that is going to control that energy and it is very important that we, the people of the world, deal with this issue. The Summit on Climate Change, which is being held at Copenhagen, is currently in session. I spoke about this last week. It is going to go until the 17th of this month, and there are many people who are pushing for all nations to sign into this treaty. This treaty will create a global world government, and it will do nothing to prevent climate change. Climates change. That's what they do. Now, there has been an abundant amount of scientific evidence that clearly shows that though we are going through a slight heating period at the moment due to solar maximum 24, over a larger scale, the world is in fact cooling. It is not warming. This is happening because of reduced radiation from the sun, and the sun is the engine that drives the Earth's climate. This simply can't be denied. Now, the slight warming of the Earth's atmosphere that I spoke of before that occurs from time to time is in fact due to little periods of increased solar radiation and high levels of sunspot activity. Now, solar observatories have been collecting data on sunspot activity for several centuries, folks, ever since the invention of the telescope, in fact. And a definite correlation has been observed between sunspot activity and the temperature on the Earth, the surface temperature of the globe. And graphs clearly show that solar activity very closely matches not only recent global temperatures, but also historical changes for the past 11 to 1200 years. There was a period in history known as the Maunder Minimum, which occurred between 1645 and 1715. It was an extremely cold period. It was almost like a mini ice age. And just to demonstrate things, this was in a period where there was very, very little sunspot activity. And there was also, as talked about by many people, including Lord Monckton, there was the medieval warm period between 950 and 1300. And this was the time when the Vikings actually colonised Greenland because they could actually sail in there then, whereas now much of Greenland is covered with ice. The whole area where the Vikings went in is covered with ice. So it's a lot cooler now than it was in the medieval warm period. I have... A video actually posted on my website. It's a talk that was given by Lord Monkton. It's available on YouTube. It's all over the place. It goes for an hour and 45 minutes. It's posted on the climate date page on thecrowhouse.com. Now, Lord Monkton goes through all of this evidence. And he points out the many, many lies. There's around about 40 lies or even more in Al Gore's film An Inconvenient Truth. There is so much misinformation in that film. 
basically the whole film is a lie. As I said a couple of shows ago, the truth was too inconvenient to include in the film. Now, getting back to The Sun, the Space and Science Research Centre has openly stated, now I quote, it says there are historic and important changes taking place on the Sun's surface. This will have only one outcome. A new climate change is coming that will bring about an extended period of deep cold to the planet. So, in an attitude that clearly defies all logic, it would seem that the proponents of the global warming scenario are intent on completely disregarding this and completely disregarding the influence of the sun upon global temperatures. You remember the sun, folks, that huge ball of burning plasma that lights our world, that gives you sunburn if you stand out in it too long. They don't think that this thing has anything to do with the temperatures on Earth. They're trying to tell us that it's all man, and they're trying to tell us that the harmless gas, CO2, that we exhale all day, that all plants need in order to survive, one of the four building blocks of life on this planet, they are telling you that this is a cause of pollution and that rises in CO2 levels are what is creating global warming. Now, folks, this is a barefaced lie. This is absolutely a barefaced lie. In a recent paper for the Danish National Space Center, they wrote that the sun appears to be the main forcing agent in global climate change. Even though atmospheric carbon dioxide continues to accumulate, it's up about 4% since 1998, the global mean temperature has remained flat. That raises some obvious questions about the theory that CO2 is the cause of climate change. Folks, as I said before, CO2 is, of course, one of the essential building blocks of life on this planet. Now, I've discussed with you on earlier shows the existence of solar cycles and sunspot activity, and sunspot activity occurs on an average of about every 11 years. And a great many very reputable scientists have also found an inverse correlation between the length of solar cycles, sunspot activity, and solar radiation. Now this date does vary folks, solar cycles can actually last between about 7 years and every 14 years. Longer cycles actually have less sunspot activity than shorter cycles. They just sort of last longer, there's slower periods on the graph if you look at the wave. Now it's this longer solar cycle that has caused the average global surface temperatures to remain approximately the same, they remain pretty constant. Okay. But they've actually fallen significantly over the last 18 months. Now, there's even organisations, land-based monitoring centres, whose reports have also said that this is the same. However, contrary to this, people such as Al Gore and all those who support him, which would include my Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd, do not seem to have caught up with these developments. They are still on about global warming. They are still insisting that the science is settled and they are still saying that there is no more debate on the issue. And they are using that mentality to go to Copenhagen and sign all of our countries over to this global governing body that has been created, even as I broadcast this show. Now, it's very important that this Copenhagen Treaty and this global government that has been created be rejected by the people of this planet. There is no convincing scientific evidence that the human release of carbon dioxide has caused or will cause in the foreseeable future any catastrophic heating of the Earth's atmosphere, any disruption of the Earth's climate. Now by saying that, I am not saying that we should go and trash the environment, absolutely not. But you've got to understand these huge factories and things like that, these are not releasing CO2, these are releasing toxins and effluents. You breathing is what is releasing CO2. CO2 is a naturally occurring gas. These huge industrial areas with smoke pouring out of the smokestacks, this is not CO2, folks. Of course, it contains some CO2, but this is toxic waste. This is entirely different. CO2 is a natural building block of life. It is what you exhale when you breathe. It is what the plants on this planet thrive on. It is what powers our oceans. This 
Copenhagen Treaty and this whole global warming scam is suggesting that CO2 is a toxin. This is a tax on breathing. Now, when this Copenhagen Treaty is signed, it will hand control of your government and my government, your nation and my nation, over to this, this global governing body. They will be putting a 2% tax on everything. Everything, folks. Now, think about how much money that is. A 2% increase on everything and they will be creating a global police force to ensure that this tax is paid. This whole thing is being run by the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. This is the banking cartel's big ditch attempt to take over the planet. And these are the same people who control all the media and control all the monetary system. These are the same people who create all the starvation in the world, start all the wars, do all the stuff, and have put the world in the state it's in in order to scare you into believing that global warming is a reality. And these people are about to use this huge fear campaign that they have created to take over the world. 